And then I remember it clicked, and I was like, oh my gosh, I am with my boys in Canada. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the Happiness Podcast. I am with my best friend right now, also my roommate, and right now we are in a a garage, and that's why I've decided to call the next series of my next podcast coming through called the Storehouse Series. Maybe, I don't know. I'm not com- completely convinced on it. But, um... Blank. Blank. <laughs> blank. I'm just... You know when you kind of... Because we're filming this. What about this. introducing me? Yeah, i got to introduce you. Yeah, exactly. Introduce oh, man. The life of a podcast host. This is hard. But this is the, my first time... This is our first time um, filming this. And it's actually quite weird because I'm talking as if it's only audio. But there's a camera there and a camera there. And, yeah. Anyways... How you feeling? Nerves, nerves are gone. Nerves are here, but as soon as we progress... As soon as we start going. Horrible intro, but we can only get better. <laughs> We're keeping the intro? <laughs> you, you know what? I'm going to keep it. Let's roll yeah, it. Let's roll Let's it. it. Let's roll it. We're happening now. So yeah. you dropped me off at the airport, and I was about to go and do some social work in Germany, and I wasn't... My plan wasn't to go to Canada. I wanted to be in Europe for at least uh, like six months, work, and just see what happens. But then you dropped me off. You and Jared dropped me off. Two of my best mates dropped me off at the airport and we were there and we were, you guys were seeing me off. I checked in my luggage, we were getting coffees, then we sat down and I remember you were like, Daniel, just, just come. <laughs> I remember you just kind of, it was just silent because we didn't, you know, when your mate's leaving, you don't really know what to say. I remember just feeling so, just so ready to the point where I was telling my girlfriend before I left, I was like, when I step off that plane, I feel like I'm going to break down and cry because I've like, I've wanted this and I'd worked so hard and we planned to go maybe six months three to six months beforehand um and for me it was the whole idea of I'm leaving my job you know complete freedom I'm not renting I'm getting out like I have absolutely nothing mind you a girlfriend that had to stay home while I was gone (laughs) but apart from her like I had no places to be no ties no rent to pay no nothing and I I remember just like remembering that or thinking that when I get off that plane, I'm just going to be overwhelmed with the sense of I'm doing it, you know, like yeah, yeah. which was the best, the best feeling. Yeah. But yeah. I, I would have, I would have hated to get like to hop off the plane and people look across and they see like this big tall Australian guy breaking down crying. <laughs> He's a wimp that misses his mummy. You know. Yeah. I remember my first experience with a, a French local. Well, how did you find Ke- learning French? Sorry, Quebecois. I Quebecois. Say. Ah, nice, Quebecois. nice. Um. I learnt little bits here and there, but learning language is just... Go on, go, go your French. Um, je suis désolé, je parle seulement anglais. Oh, look which, at him! don't ask me to translate into English, because I've forgotten the English translation, but I remember how to say it. It's something, something, do you speak English, because my English, my French isn't good, or... I don't know. Do you, you, know, know, do you, do you know Say it again. Je suis désolé, je parle seulement anglais. Yeah, I'm sorry, I only speak English. Yeah, which is a horrible thing to greet someone with. <laughs> I can imagine you, you meet someone, bonjour, ça va? Yeah. Where you go, I'm sorry. <laughs> je suis désolé, je parle à tout le monde. Okay. Oh, that's Saying, respectful, that's respectful. I'm not putting effort into your language, <laughs> I just speak English. But I remember my first experience um, interacting with one of the locals there was we were going up to our mate's apartment because that's where we were crashing um, while the wedding was on and now prepping everything. Um, and they rented so they had a landlord and once we were walking up with all our bags up the stairs um, to get to this apartment and the landlord came over and saw these three backpackers and must have thought these guys are renting out my house to other people and making money you know so he came over in a bit of a flurry and a bit of bit of fury a bit of bite and started speaking to me and i just completely locked up oh was it in complete all in french all in french yeah he didn't he didn't speak english and and i remember because the boys had gone ahead as well so it was it was just me face to face with this guy (laughs) he was speaking french and i just had no clue what to do i said oh no no no, sorry and turned around and walked away (laughs) and that was it that was my first experience and I felt horrible. Hey, so he was going off at you and you said, oh, not, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and walked away. Not not so much going off. I think he came over with the intention of finding out what was going on. Okay, yeah. The poor guy is... Uh, oh, I just... I remember walking away being like... And again, I walked to the boys 
regrouped as a pack and then we went and, <laughs> then we went and faced the, the buffalo you know what I'm saying um, <laughs> so and then we sorted it all out and it was all good but I remember just feeling like I need to put more effort into my French because that I never ever want to experience that in my life again well, ever you did well that's awesome that's well awesome. I wouldn't say walking away yeah. from a stranger as he talks to you yeah, is doing yeah. well but yeah. our intention Daniel myself and our best friend Jared were gonna buy a car we started in montreal and jared had booked a plane ticket out of calgary two weeks later yeah, i think yeah, um yeah. and so our main mission was to get this car and get on the road so we could see as much as canada before our best mate had to fly home yeah yeah so i think that- we wanted to get jared to bant to bant that, yep. that was it that was like we want to get to jared to bant buy our own car yep within two weeks which was very stressful yeah like, i yeah, thought traveling yeah. i was on holiday you know <laughs> yeah, nah. there was, there yeah. was a lot yeah. of pressure on trying to get this car yeah. um we had a lot of dud deals oh, go man, down and worst. people yeah. were saying yeah come over i got it and then we rocked up to one suburb and sat around for three hours waiting for them to give us a call so we could get their address and they called us in three hours and they're like ah uh, sorry we've yeah we've yeah. just sold it and we got public we had to do public transport everywhere because we didn't have a car so it was actually it, we took our damn time to get everywhere and i remember there was a point where we were sitting in this cafe when we just got the phone call no i've already sold the car sorry we we're just thinking like jared was like super we're, we're all upset and then we none of us really wanted to say it but we we're just like should we just catch a bus to bear catch a bus to calgary well i think it was i think it was too late at that point because we, we figured out the timeline and if we couldn't find a car within three days, yeah. we had to fly. Yeah, yeah. Which really would have just... <laughs> wrecked the mood. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we wrecked what we wanted to do. We wanted to do our own thing and everything. Uh, and I remember we were just going, we we sourced out all of like the different car ads from different locals that are posting about their wanting to sell their car. We're going through them all. We've seen all of them. We know all of them. You know what I mean? Yeah, we almost know. by name. Yeah, almost by owner. name, yeah. We wrote them down. We're ticking them off. We're crossing them out. And then there was one car that we stumbled across and we hadn't seen it before. All the rest were unavailable. And it was just this one car, this one photo. Yeah, one... Like the, the sketchiest deal you would yeah, come across. It was yep. one photo. And usually in the bio when it has... um. What is it like? Oh, oh good oh, air conditioner. Just had a recent service. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it was just, it just wrote a good deal. <laughs> Which? <laughs> and the A didn't have a capital letter. It was like a lowercase A. Bad spelling, bad ad all around. <laughs> I wouldn't advise him for an advertiser. <laughs> so it wasn't. But, but he, 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 got he got us. He got us. Because we went, we went, we bought the car. $700, mind you. Yeah, but Canadian. in saying that, the, like we we definitely judged a book by its cover. We did. We did because he told <laughs> we, he told us to meet us out in this some neighborhood that was two hours with public transport out of where we were from. So we got there. We were meeting this dude at this petrol station. I remember we talked to him on the phone. He had a very rich accent. I could I couldn't put a, like a name on it, but he had a very rich accent. Yep. And then he comes in and he goes, "Yeah, come over." Quick, quickly though, this is yeah. right on the back of being denied a car. Someone had just, we'd gone to them and they'd said, no, we'd just sold it. So then the, to commit to two hours of travel there, potentially we so not have the car. And then two hours back, yeah. we decided like, this is, this is the make or break. We better get this <laughs> damn car. Yeah. And then he, he, he's we're waiting at this petrol station. We didn't really, we judged book by his color, by his accent. We didn't really know what was going on. And then the car comes and he goes, Come in and come to my house. <laughs> I don't know how to do the accent. No, no, you nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> and we're just like, we all looked at each other like, do we do it? We can't. If one of us says, no, I'm not going to, then we all kind of have to, but we all didn't know, you know? Yeah. So we're just like, you know what? We all just didn't say anything. We got into the car. There was three of us in saying that, but this dude was big. He was big. And whilst we are in the car, he was. Well, I asked where he was from, and he goes, I'm from Romania. <laughs> Nailed that. No, that was Terminator. Sorry to any Romanians <laughs> yeah. listening out there. <laughs> oh, I've just made a mess. Anyways, um, and then I remember he was saying, I don't want to do the accent. <laughs> no, go on. No, you're doing a real good job. <laughs> he was like, he was saying like, um... Do you remember, what was it? He, I was like, oh, so do you do this often and things like that? And he goes, yeah, I sell like high exports, in, <laughs> local exports in Africa, all this kind of thing. Very quickly, we established that he 
probably wasn't the best human out. Um, but we got we got to his house, and it was by that oh, time it was no. night time. It was the door. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was dark by then as well. Um, so we were like, it, we're either gonna get a car or we're gonna get killed. That was, that was the two options. There was no, there was no literally this, make or break. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, and I remember as we were walking up to the door, um, he said. I won't try the accent. <laughs> oh, please, come no, on. No, I already did. He, go on, go on. No. <laughs> he, he said, I hope you guys aren't afraid of dogs. And as a bit of a joke in return, I went, oh, only if they bite. And he didn't say anything. And he just kept walking to his front door and he was dead silent. And that's, yeah, I was like, oh, he that. maybe didn't hear me. Maybe. Yeah, he yeah. opens the door and he's got a full-grown male German shepherd. It was massive. I it thought was, it was a wolf. It was a wolf. It, was it a probably wolf. was a wolf across <laughs> German shepherd. And we. Do, that's when, for me personally, I was like, nah, this is it. This guy is honestly going to kill us and f- feed us to his wolf. And so we start doing paperwork and he's commanding this dog to go do stuff. He's like, the dog was coming over and it was friendly. Dog would pat it. But then he would yell something in Romanian and the dog would take off and sit in its bed perfectly. <laughs> and in my head, that was just a sign. You've trained this dog so well. If you tell him to jump and take our arm off, he'll do it. <laughs> so that was... Because uh, I, I remember I remember before we were going in, because uh, on the ad, the car was up for 700. And I was like, boys, boys, come in, here. I'm pretty good at bartering. So when we get there, I'll I'll work a bit of magic. I'll see if we can get down to like five hundred dollars. As soon as I saw that man, as soon as I saw that wolf, I was not speaking out of line at all. You want eight hundred? I was yeah, I was yeah, offering more money just to make a quick transaction. Tip, man. <laughs> oh um, man! But we and got it. We got it. We got the car. We signed all the documents, and it was all legal. It was all fine. Well, we we wouldn't have known if it wasn't, but we <laughs> yeah, didn't get picked up. Our well, our knowledge on the Department of Transport in Canada is a bit. We were naive, mm-hmm. but we made it happen. I remember when we had to go the next day, get the license plates, and then we just put the license plates into the into the window. Yeah, we, we didn't. didn't we didn't have... even seal them onto the back of the car. We just put it at the back of the window, and then we we're just like. This is it. We're, we're just going. We're, we're just on. going. We're, we're taking way too much time. We were so excited. So we went, remember when we went to the Workaways family's friend's house and we were just having some beers and, and hanging out and they were playing the horseshoe game. Oh, when you I, throw the thing around the pole? Yeah, in America. Yeah. I can't remember what it's called, but there's a big horseshoe game where there's just a pole stuck in the ground and you got to, from a distance, throw a horseshoe to catch around the pole yeah and it swirls around yeah yeah yep. around the and, pole yeah, and yeah we were yeah. playing this with um our workaways friends who were all older they were probably 40s maybe mm. 50s um and it was daniel and i on one team oh no and then <laughs> oh, <laughs> you remember, no. oh. i wanted to bring this up but i'm held off <laughs> so there was daniel and i on one team and then two of their friends that we were just having bands with you know having a laugh um and daniel and i were very new to the game so we're lining up, Daniel lines up his first throw, and he throws it, but it's a horrible, horrible toss, and it bounces across the floor a few times straight into one of our opponent's shins, and he, being a grown man, he being a grown man, reacted slightly, like a few hops on one leg and a few oohs, ahs, and Daniel goes, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, you're all right. And this guy passes it off as nothing and says, no, no, it's, a, it's fine. It's nothing. I'm just going to go inside. And so as he was heading inside, he walked past me and I saw that his leg was covered in blood. And this horseshoe had torn a bit of his shin and it was just bleeding relentlessly. <laughs> and that was... I was, shouldn't be laughing. Oh, I, I had no idea. It, was, it wasn't heavy damage, but it was enough to, to make a grown man whimper a little. Oh, I felt so bad afterwards. That's the worst thing. I couldn't go in because I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, told me I, afterwards. I, I did, yeah, I did. Because you didn't see it. Because um, you walked past me, not Daniel's side. And Daniel, being... Being inconsiderate, obviously just <laughs> wounded a human and then neglected him and forgot about him. Oh, yeah, kept going, went back to the game. I gotta win. Um, but that's when we also that's at the same point that we convinced the American oh. girls that all different things. Yeah, um, yeah. That the like leaking back, like we ride our kangaroos to school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which isn't true, but <laughs> we loved, we absolutely loved milking the stereotype, yeah, yeah. especially Americans. 
don't visit not a lot of them visit australia you know so we we just had so much room we convinced two girls that the average life expectancy of an australian is 23 yeah um, yeah, yeah, because there's so many drop bears and there's so many (laughs) snakes and there's so many sharks yeah yeah. and they're always taking people and they were just baffled they were like are you kidding we we live to 83 over here. We're like 80. That's like four times what we lived to, you lucky bastards. I love how our reactions were like the same thing when yeah. they said it. They, but here in America, we we live until we're 83. I mean, you're like, what? Your healthcare system must be on point. Yeah. But that's also when we tricked another person oh. into the fact that Australians, well, she she inquired about yeah. our own language. Yeah, she was like, so what's it like learning English as a second language? And we're like, what, 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 do, you, what do you mean? She was like, well, because of the accent and everything. We're like, we're, I remember me and you kind of looked at each other and like talked like telepathically. This like, is it. We, this we've is got it. her. <laughs> like, this is the gold mine. Do not laugh. Do not mess up. This Another is victim. It. Another victim, but this is it. And we were with like, yeah, it's like that's why our accents sound really different. Um, Australian's quite a, like a hard language. Like, do you want to learn it? And she was like, "Oh yes, I love culture. If it teach me Australian, <laughs> what was the word? Um, Shang Nom. Shang Nom. Yeah, you, yeah, you did a click. You did a click, so, which is yeah. a highly African thing. To <laughs> yeah, do, I yeah, think. no, I could surprise myself. Yeah. But, uh, um, I was like Shang Nom, which means goodbye. And she's like Shang Nom. I'm like, no, 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 Shang Nom. Shang Nom. <laughs> Daniel repeated this. A couple of times to her until she had it. And the whole time, I just... I'm not very good with that type of stuff, so I had to look away because I was about to lose it. You were looking at the wall. I was just just staring blankly at a white wall, just being like, how can I make this wall not make me laugh because I'm about to lose it. But we got it. We We left. We left. We said, shang long. And and away we went. Do you reckon it was wrong of us to not tell Not at all. Not at all. No. I think the way that we mess with people is completely understandable and... I don't feel bad whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. But then, so then we kind of, we were talking, we thought, why not just go on like a quick US road trip? And I remember as we were talking about a different route we can make to Montana, as we were talking, within minutes, the road trip just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Boy, did it escalate. <laughs> it escalated. Yeah. We started with, oh, let's, let's just duck down into, I'm trying to remember all like my- Like Oregon. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, let's duck down to Idaho, maybe see a bit of Oregon, and then back up to Montana. Yeah. Take a couple of days to do it. Really explore the place. And then we're like, well, seeing two other states, not enough. Let's push it to three. Let's push it to four. We settled on 11. <laughs> and we, like five minutes later. Five minutes later, yeah. yeah. It was just like we it was like we were just counting to each yeah. other. Yeah. There was no words exchanged. Yeah. It was just numbers. It's just numbers and US states. Yeah. Nevada, Nebraska. <laughs> Wyoming. Yeah. But then, so then we went on this massively ambitious um, road trip, three day road trip, and we smashed down 11 states. One of them was Colorado for 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we stopped at McDonald's for yeah. McFlurry or something. Which and then, was horrible. It was yeah. a horrible coffee. Oh, I love Oregon though. Really beautiful place. <laughs> all, all 5Ks of it. Yeah. <laughs> all, the highway was fantastic. Yeah. But. It was such an incredible experience, but it was really cool seeing the very different ranging landscapes of the US, and that was just in the northwest yep. of US. So being able to see all of that and within such a short period of time was, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was um, it was crazy because we were we were absolutely living in our car. Mm. We were eating breakfast, jumping back in the car, and driving, sleeping in the car. Stopping over for pee breaks, which people tooted and didn't seem to like, but in Australia we get away with it all the time. Yeah. Um, we were we were f- we were just moving, yeah, you know, like yeah. we we had to do it. We were driving eight hours. Sh- well, I don't want to say shifts because it takes away from the adventure feel, but yeah. we were driving eight hours each and doing that until we couldn't drive anymore. Yeah. One person would sleep while the other person drove, yeah. and then we'd switch back so we could just try and get as much cramp like we were cramming yeah we were yeah. cramming the states yeah. into our minds which just, made us go again to like really we call it a bumble or but like really tired <laughs> grumpy grumpy moods yeah. and things like that but it worked and do you remember um we're taking it was getting quite late and then at around 11 because a part of what what also really appealed to us to also extend this trip so much 
was the idea of seeing Mount Rushmore. Mm-hmm. And the idea of seeing Mount Rushmore, I didn't even know where it was to begin with. I, when someone said it, I didn't even... I couldn't picture it. Yeah, yeah, neither. But when someone said those... Mount Rushmore... I remember when you said, we're going through Mount Rushmore, I was like, sick. Yeah, where is, is that like it? a what sick mount- mountain? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. But it, for people who don't know, it's the four presidents that are carved into the mountain in uh, Rapid City uh, in yeah, South remember. Dakota. North yes, Dakota. Yes, South Dakota. South Dakota. Yep. Sorry, um, Danny, North... Dakota people. Dakotians, if we did get it wrong. wrong. Pretty, pretty confident it sounds. Yeah. Um, and I remember we were getting there, and it was getting really late. It was getting bored all, uh, I think, 10.30 p.m. And we Googled, Googled um, the. we stopped in to get some fuel, and we Googled, um, can we see Mount Rushmore tonight? But we we're both thinking, seeing it at night time, I don't think that's worthwhile. I don't think it would be the same as seeing it in daylight. And it was 10 by that point, so we yeah. thought, surely it's going to close. Yeah, um, but it closes at 11.30 and we'll, I think we're like 45 minutes to like an hour away. Yeah. So like, it was, it was a rush. Yeah. So the, the, place, <laughs> nice. yeah, the place lived up to its name. <laughs> yeah. We did have to rush to get there. And we are just, but in my head, I was thinking whilst we were driving, I was like, is it worth it? We're seeing it at night time. Are we rushing it to night? Yeah. <laughs> 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 the <Got him. laughs> But it was, it, our, our mindset was quite sapped. You know, we'd been driving for so long. Yeah. We were need, in need of some rest. Yeah. Um, and I remember just both talking to each other and going, oh, like, it's probably not worth it. But we always fell back on the idea. We're in America. Mm. Like, we're, we're traveling while we're here. Let's see it. Let's just yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. And I remember when we got in, it was like 11, 11.05. And there was, like, we were like, are we allowed to go in? Like, nothing was locked off. But there was just no cars. And this is probably one of the most touristic places ever in the U.S., there were so many different parking lots, you know, thousands. Yep. But it was all just green, like everything's green, like there's no park, um, there's no cars or anything like that. So we're just like, okay, we'll just keep driving until we just get stopped and they tell us we have to go away, you know? Yeah. We kept driving, then we parked, and then we walked out, and then we didn't have to pay for like, the admission fee because... There was no one at the office. There was no one at the office, so we just walked by. And I remember we were just walking by. It was like a little drizzle of rain. It was really nice. And then, boom, we turned the corner. And it was just four massive presidents. They're big. They're big. And they were just lit up. Yeah. And it was silent above I think anything. That's the, the biggest thing I remember is just standing. It was a little bit cold looking at these presidents. And, like, when you look at something bigger than yourself, you just have an appreciation like that. Mm. That is massive, you know. Yeah. It, like the size really credits something's um, capacity like, to amaze someone, you know. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that it was silent. Yeah. Like I think we saw one other person there the whole time. Yeah. Bar the two security guards, um, and it was just us, and it was just these four presidents just glaring at us. It was. I was pretty like. Um, it was a goosebump moment. Goosebump moment, a hundred percent, and. I am so happy that we decided to do it. Yep. I'm so happy we didn't like sleep on the side of the highway and then go there at daytime. I am so happy we went there at 11.30 at night, yep. right before it closed. That was a really cool thing. And do you remember drone story or not, just in case the US government hears well, it? Well, I was going to say that, but if we've already given the Canadian government a reason to <laughs> infringe us for not paying that fine. So might as well do it might as well do the, yeah. Um, we just, we'll just cross North America off our <laughs> yeah, to-do map. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we were vlogging at time and thought, oh, it'd be great to get a drone shot of this because I, I own a drone under my name, Drew Barnes. You're welcome, D. So I'll let you off with that one. Um, and so... We got there, and I'm very particular about when, I, where, and when I fly my drone, because um, I'm, I don't want to ruin it for the rest of everyone, you know. But this is an encourager, you know. It's encouraging, <laughs> encouraging. It'll be great for the vlog. People will love to see it. You take it home, you show your mum, you know, show your family. And so there was no one around. It was dead silent, which didn't help because drones are extremely loud. <laughs> yeah. So if we're gonna get caught, someone just had to have. Like, no ears. ears. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which last time I checked, majority of people do. Um, and so, sent my drone up, got some awesome footage. Um, but I remember at one point, I was looking, because I was sort of flying half on my screen on my phone, but also looking up to see where the drone was, but also just to admire it, because I didn't want to miss the moment. And I remember flying, I was trying to do a pan shot where I fly straight, and then I come up and over the president's heads, you know, just mm. to sort of finish the scene almost. Yeah. Um, and I was flying and 
I didn't know but my drone had reached max height. And so I was flying up in my head looking at these presidents, but my drone was flying straight in. And when I looked at the screen, I almost ran into Abraham Lincoln's nose. And I remember just freaking out, being like, this is why I don't do this. This is why I don't fly drones. I almost chipped the nose off Abraham Lincoln. Imagine if you actually crashed the no- the drone into in the, the nose of Abraham Lincoln. And it, it would have made a very small dent in a mountain. Yeah. You know, but... I th- I, like, I don't know if it would have been noticeable or not. Uh, but it, it wouldn't have been. You don't reckon? Nah. But no. it would have been sad for my drone. Yeah, true, true. But to be able to tell someone that I, I almost chipped the nose off Abraham Lincoln. Um, so after that, quickly landed the drone. And yeah. We, we got, and we out, got of out of there. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We got out. Yeah. And as we were walking out, I don't yeah. know how we missed it on the way in, but as yeah. walking out, maybe they put it on the wrong side of the corridors. Yeah, yeah. But there was signs, signs everywhere. No drones allowed. No drones. No drones allowed. Just we weren't able to do it. We were in it together, you know, and I think that really credited the travel experience for the mm. both of us because yeah. we were in it. I don't think we were apart more than five meters at any point yeah, for yeah. three whole months. This journey know. took yeah. place over three, two to three months. Yeah. I remember when we got into Montana and I was sleeping in the car again and you were sleeping in a tent, like I think like a hundred meters away. And when I went to sleep, I was like, can, no, Drew's not here. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was stretching out. I was yeah. loving it. Yeah. So far, like the car really, the car holds a lot of warmth. Because it got oh. really cold where we were in Montana. We are helping build this organic tiny house. Mm-hmm. And it, we were in the elements. We got the shower in the brisk cold. In an outdoor shower. Yeah, yep. yeah. It was freezing. And it was just... It was such a like a raw... Kind of linked with also the thunder story. Yeah. Kind of being with the elements, with Mother Nature. It was really cool. We're no hippies or anything like that. Nah, but nah. it was really cool to experience the rawness and authenticity of that kind of... Um, North American um, countryside, I guess you could say. Yeah, I remember sleeping in a beanie, in a shirt, in a jumper, in a jacket, in gloves, <laughs> in jeans yeah. with trackies over them. Yeah. No one wants to sleep in jeans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With socks. Yeah. And I was still cold with two sleeping bags on me. That's yeah. how that's how yeah. cold it was. But yeah. again, we're used to warmth here in Australia. So <laughs> yeah. A little bit of cold. Like, a normal like Canadian or Montanian person would be like just one sleeping bag yeah. or something, they'll be alright. People were probably picturing like minus thirty degrees no, yeah. the, no, it was minus three, probably. Yeah. At the most. Yeah, at the at most. The coldest. At the most. Um but that's what I mean though. At the end of the day, like it was such a it was like an unsugar coated adventure. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Like it was hard, it was just there were times where we spat at each other. Not literally. Maybe literally. Probably you, yeah. <laughs> you dirty boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think, like, and I think what I wanted to f- kind of l- link this all up to is, because there's ideas that lots of friends make plans to travel together. Like, oh, let's go traveling. Da, da, da. And there's, you realize that there's friends that you love to death, but you can't exactly travel with. It's a bit, because traveling, you were together all the time, all the time. It's more than living together. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so, what would be your perspective on, like, best friends traveling together? Like, yeah, I talk about the stories to people and all the adventures and everything, um, but there was definitely times where we did fight, you know, mm. like, we, especially because we're quite different mm. um, in how we roll, so it was, we clashed heads yeah. heavily, towards the end heavily, it was yeah. sort of, we were starting to burn out, I think, um, but I would just say, don't travel with anyone that you're not very close with, you know, mm. for for that length of length of yeah, time. Like we yeah. were we were together nonstop, yeah, two to three months, yeah, um, yeah. But you got to be committed to that friendship, you know. Yeah, you can't yeah. you can't just yeah. meet Susan on your way <laughs> to the handbag store, you know. You got to you got to know someone proper, and even yeah. when you do it, even for us who we're we're very close, we're very, yeah, very close yeah, friends. Yeah, it yeah. was a struggle. It was, and cause, and I guess it kind of links back to that. It was like a brick like things didn't always go our way for yeah. both of us so sometimes when we're angry at the situation we take it out on each other yeah do you know what I mean yep. uh, we're each other's punching bags and I think like yeah I don't like and it's because when people ask me like oh should I travel with them and da, 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 it's always a bit tricky but do you remember at the very end we had spits and sat and everything like that but we went to um like a like a supermarket or like a, a big um, shopping complex and we're just having like a crappy Starbucks coffee just waiting for something and then we just had like 
a ch big chat Proper and then we chat. and we just kind of like we kind of like realized things where i went wrong i was a bit controlling with the vlogs and things like that i wasn't being as open-minded wasn't taking criticism and like and so it was just kind of like really analyzing all of that and then kind of just really humbling yourself letting go of your ego letting go of all that and then it's funny how like who i don't know whoever did it first but it's funny how when someone goes a little bit like humbles himself the other person just goes right back with you yeah do you know what i mean he goes yeah. well man i'm I, i'm sorry about and he but well i'm sorry too about yeah. it, you know what i mean and well, how two best friends if one's sitting on the high horse the other person is down saying i'm sorry hmm. if you're good friends the person's not going to stand the high horse. Yeah. And if they if they do, then it's... They're not, you they're got not a, you got a friend. question. Yeah. yeah. Close yeah. to the yeah. 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 And even now, it's awesome because we can reminisce on yeah. things like... And it's hard, it's heartbreaking now because, like, my computer's getting low on battery right now. And there's so many other stories that happened throughout that three months that I would have... Like, we told that story, like, that whole thing very quickly. Oh, very quickly. There's so much that happened. But that's why we vlogged it. But that's why we vlogged it. So check out the YouTube stuff. What's your YouTube channel? Well, they, like, if they're watching it on YouTube... Then... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just go to reason videos. Yeah, but for the podcast. But for the podcast, Daniel Casadio at YouTube. It's just Daniel Casadio. Oh, is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm getting used to it. The whole yeah. failing forward thing's over, so it's hard for me to... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, what are some closing thoughts for you? For us, we resolved all our differences right before you left, before we both went home. Um, and I think that for me was the biggest takeaway, never leave bitter. Mm. Never ever leave bitter. Because mm. if you leave bitter, then you're accepting that that's just gonna fester, mm. you know? And I think we can look back on it with such fond memories due to the fact that we sorted out our differences yeah. before we left. Yeah. And we, we left best friends. Yeah, yeah, we, It sucked leaving. Yeah. You know? Like As towards that, the end, yeah. it was like, oh, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go home. Yeah. But when you flew home and, well, when you flew to South America and I flew home, it was like, oh, I'm leaving my best mate. Yeah, you know? and yep, so. Yep. Yeah. My advice with a anything in life, never ever leave bitter. Yeah, yeah, never hold grudges. Never mm -hmm. hold grudges. Grudges, yeah. Man, perfect, perfect. I reckon we're going to do more podcasts like this. I'm very keen to. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, well, guys, thank you very much for listening to the Happiness Podcast. Do I look at the camera or do I just look at the microphone? I'll look at the camera while you speak to the microphone. But what do I look? I look at... Just speak to the microphone. Just speak to the microphone. Okay. You're speaking to your podcasters. <laughs> You're speaking to the podcasters. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for listening to the Happiness Podcast. I've been your host, Daniel Casadio, and my guest, Drew Barnes, uh, my best mate and my roommate and my content creator. Assistant. Assistant. Yeah. And, um, yeah, uh, more podcasts are going to be happening in the future, and Drew and I are always thinking of ways to create content, whether it be on YouTube or that's pretty much where it all lives. YouTube or <laughs> Spotify. Oh, Spotify. Yeah. Um, I really get even better at my outros, but it's all learning and working progress. But guys, I just want to say thank you very much for listening. And if there's anything that you guys liked or things that we can do better at, let me know because we're always looking at ways to improve it. So thank you for stopping by and thank you for giving us your attention. Ciao for now. You still looked at the camera. Yeah, I was meant to look at the camera. No, the I told time. you to look at the phone. Let's just cut it. <laughs> <laughs> done, done. How's it, brother? Oh man, that was fun. That was good. That was good.